you know, I'm not saying this to, uh, I mean, I know where you are in your life now and we're all glad that you are, but, uh, when you lay it all out like that, everything you got financially is on the line. You've been working with your dad. That's not going super awesome. So your family life's turned upside down outside the house. But now, you know, at the time, the love of your life, your wife is battling for her life with cancer. And this is all going on at the same time. Again, not trying to excuse whatever, but it's no wonder that somebody looks for a release and maybe they find it in a 12 ounce can, but goodness gracious, like we got to relieve some pressure somewhere and it ain't at work and it ain't with family and it ain't at home and the bills keep coming and the stress and pressure keeps coming. Like it was a pressure cooker that created a pretty combustible time for you. I imagine. Well, to try to, and look, and I'm so grateful that I went through all this and on the other side of it, but does club Jarrett give you a, a little bit different context now that <laughs> that part of it? I oh, mean, I always knew that that was the deal. I mean, you got to be able to blow off some steam. Like, and we blow it off steam. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You had to, because it's like, no matter what you do, it's going to be criticized. It ain't good enough. Everybody's upset. Everybody's bitching. We're a day late. We're a dollar short. And when we go home, we got to be super dad and super husband and and put on a brave face. It's okay for tonight. If we're just like, how many of those can I finish buddy? See. <laughs> Get Kevin. To, yeah. You, you ain't kidding. Um, and, and you know what? And, 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 and looking at, uh, we hadn't got to the pay-per-view part, but when you kind of look at our roster again, I'm late thirties. I'm not that far removed from my mid to late twenties. So when I'm looking at an AJ Styles or a Chris Daniels or a Chris Harris or a James Storm or Eric Young or Bobby Roode, when I'm looking these guys in the face and they're up in Club Jarrett and then we're going to work the next day and they're busting their ass, just in my gut of guts, hell, I wanted them to succeed. But I also knew damn well they're all frustrated. Wait a minute, you're bringing Hall and Nash in here and they ain't taking that many bumps and I know they're getting paid more than me. Yeah, that 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 was um uh, that was you said combustible. That's a good word. That that was a it was just I've always said it was just a pressure, pressure cooker. cooker. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, something's got to give and and we know eventually it does and but let's talk about your dad here. Cause I know we're, we're close to two hours. So we're going to start winding things down eventually. Um, but one of the decisions that's made here, when you're going to step away from some of the day-to-day -day booking and creative and things like that is your dad is going to say, okay, we're going to bring in dusty Rhodes to help with the book. And we'll make Dutch Mantel his assistant, Bill Banks and Jeremy Borash can still contribute. That's going to get criticized in the newsletters too, because they're going to point out, well, dusty hasn't been a successful promoter or Booker since 1986. That was the last year that something he booked was profitable. Everything else had been a money loser. And the feeling was dusty valued talking and charisma over in ring action. And if we were really trying to be a challenger brand and be different then, then maybe we needed less talk and more, I don't know, like it says in the name, total nonstop action. And I think a lot of people are probably curious, like, well, that's going to be more of the old school, like Jerry liked. But that's not maybe what the future of like the X division and what people who were the hardcore TNA fans thought it was. But I guess we're trying to serve two masters. We need to super Great. serve our base, but at the same time, we can't stay this size. We got to get the casuals loop back in. We got to have something to make them watch. And then, and that's the way ECW did it. Like Paul Heyman knew if I, if I advertise Terry Funk, old school fans are going to show up. And while they're here, I hope they get a look at Taz and Sabu and Rob Van Dam and, 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 and when you find out your dad is working on bringing dusty in, do you think that's obviously you have a lot of respect for what dusty did as a performer and a booker and all that, but did you think he was the best fit for TNA in 2004? You have, and I don't think it was in the sheets. So I went out I got called out to Dallas and I'd had a, obviously ongoing conversations. I knew, uh, let's just say this, that the heat was on 
lots of folks were unhappy. Um, I was in the line. In Dallas, of, you mean? Well, I mean, we just kind of talked about it. My old man wasn't happy with me. Yes. Obviously, we'll just say Russo wasn't happy with me. Um, Dixie. Uh, Russo had quit by this point, right? Yeah. He quit a $100,000 a year job that had him working two days a week. And he was telling yeah. people, right. Dixie has the baby. This company's over with anyway. She'll have a new toy, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Just it, again, we'll go back to the pressure cooker. And I just yeah. had a different conversation. And I get called out to Dallas and have a conversation. I come home and I find out, and I'll say it's like this big revelation, is that Dusty and Bob Carter um, have had relation, you know, ha had phone calls and Dusty made a trip out to the ranch. I knew that, and look, I'd heard different conversations and one story that popped in my mind, actually this morning when I was doing cardio, my dad and Lawler booking back and forth, back and forth. When my dad wasn't quite ready or Lawler wasn't quite ready to take things back over, my dad always slid Dundee, maybe Dutch, but he would slide somebody in as the assistant booker would become booker or kind of a, I don't call it a placeover, but a transition, all that kind of stuff. I knew that the heat was on. My home situation was cracking. My old man came to me and said, well, what do you think about all this? And I was tired of fighting city hall and me and dusty, uh, you know, we had known each other through the years, but when he came into the asylum, he would drive up every day from Atlanta. Uh, we had our arrangement, Jeff, I want to be paid when I walked in the door, that was show one. And we just kind of kept the gig going. I'd, I'd seen, I'll call it the dusty magic. He did a promo, uh, about AJ styles and I'd worked with him and just, you know, a, a, a midget in the trash can. But anyway, dusty in the asylum days was super beneficial. Also, I looked at it and knew that, okay, in these set of circumstances, okay, if I'm stepping aside and my old man is campaigning and lobbying for this, Jeff, what are you doing? Just have at it, you know, go for it. I was knew the understanding of, okay, let's just kind of see how this develops. I'm not really, you know, I'm, I'm coming into the office and they've got their team. And, um, I knew it was going to be a challenge for dusty as well because of the environment. I'll just say the environment of creating television with the Carters, with Dixie, with the talent, with, and I'm saying the talent from the legends down to the, the, the math you got to play with. You touched on a little bit of, about that. You know, there was a, a, a an issue of, wait, I'm going to get paid by the day as opposed by the match. You know, there was a, that was kind of a, a, a topic of discussion um, that, that, that was a, a topic of discussion that, um, really heated up and it was a point of frustration that talent wanted to get paid. If they're going to come to Orlando and be on one, two episodes of impact, they wanted to get paid. And I got it because everybody wanted much money. But when Panda mandated go to day rates that, I mean, D Dusty was walking into that, that I'm going to have to go down there and book two shows or it was just, there was a lot of political bandwidth that you had to turn up. And again, at the very top of the list, my dad campaigned for it. I'm just like, Hey, you guys have at it. We'll see how it goes. Um, but for, for a moment, you can probably relate to this Conrad. It was a sense of relief, but also was like, I just don't think this is going to go well.